All right, so you know, usually we're talking about horror films, exploitation, action movies, that kind of stuff. Today, we have to talk about a documentary that is on Netflix right now. It's called LA Originals, and it is amazing. I loved it. It's directed by Esteban Oreo, who is uh, a longtime collaborator with one of the world famous artists by the name of uh, Mr. Cartoon, who's a great Chicano artist, specializes in that, uh, what he calls a, a marriage of graffiti art and like jailhouse you know art you know and like this like and I it's fucking crazy because I always kind of like had that that thought in my head that it was like a good mashup of something but for him to put it like down in words and concrete like that it's exactly what it is his style is like a jailhouse graffiti explosion of East LA like this guy I'm telling you man seeing this seeing this documentary was more than just watching a documentary it was almost like a religious experience for me because not only was the soundtrack fucking phenomenal, it it covered all bases, this documentary. It started off, gave us the, the backstory of the director who's the longtime collaborator with Mr. Cartoon. Uh, he's a photographer, he's a road manager, tour manager, all these different hats. He was a stand-in for Cypress Hill during interviews and stuff. Like he he toured with Cypress Hill, he toured with Blink-182, or Blink-182, he toured with... Uh, you know, all these guys, you know, fucking House of Pain, like, he, he was partying and hanging out and photographing all these guys that were, like, on the cusp of exploding, you know, and was there through the explosion. He got to see all the crazy shit with Cypress Hill, he got to see all the crazy shit with, uh, like, Eminem, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent, all that stuff, like, there's one of the, one of the coolest things about this documentary is, you take these iconic images and you take this iconic art and you go beyond that and you see almost like okay it's like they're filming with a video camera and then Esteban's like I'm gonna take a photo and he takes a photo and it becomes a fucking the iconic photo of said artist but then you have this b-roll footage and it's like where does the b-roll go gets put on a shelf somewhere but no he put it into this documentary and you see when 50 cent was getting his back piece tattooed done and what happened with that which is fucking hilarious uh tons of background b-roll of like uh him talking with like mr cartoon and them talking with artists talking about getting their tattoos done eminem is in this snoop dogg kobe bryant fucking fat joe Nas, you know you name it and they're in this vid even ryan felipe who's an actor who's just like when you think of mr cartoon he's the last fucking person you think of so when he came up i was like damn but it's all about loving this art so it's crazy. Mr. Cartoon was a guy that I remember he, I think he tattooed little Bow Wow. He put that clown on him. And that was my first sort of this. That's who Mr. Cartoon was. It was in a fucking magazine like years and years ago. I remember being fascinated by that and printing photos off of his work and tracing it and trying to draw it and always being pissed and that I could never get it like that and trying to do his crazy lettering and all that. And to find out in this documentary, he went to school for design. So he's got, he studied lettering and all that. And you get to see some of his, his sketches, his raw art, man. Like, fuck, it was such a black. David Cho, one of, another guy that I need to do a video on. He's all throughout this video talking, you know, basically fanboying about Mr. Cartoon because, because David Cho, if you don't know who he is, he's another uh, famous Los Angeles artist who's just, you know a beast and his story is unique itself i would highly recommend checking out either his joe rogan's or his howard stern or his own fucking podcast which is insane you might need to check out some of his other stuff before you just dive into his his actual shit because it's all over the place and sexual and this and that but it's all in good fun but to see david cho you know in this documentary and to see all these people praising these guys and seeing, all, like I said, all the B-roll, all the back background footage that is just swept under the fucking rug, man. It's so cool to see that shit and to see, you know, like the stories of like these uh, couple of like crackhead types because uh, they had their offices on like Skid Row. And there was like these two kind of buckety type individuals that kept appearing and like it's crazy the span of how much footage he has there's a part where it's the guy's 41st birthday there's a part where it's his 50th birthday so you know the interaction and the the roots are deep with this type of shit and man i had such a good time watching this documentary well done well done i think it's something that was very much needed during this time of uh the fucking coronavirus bullshit man i mean it took it took me away it took me away and it's exactly what i needed so uh for that hats off man because when you are going to do a documentary about something 
and you pull it off so fucking magically, it, it, it's it's great. Like I mean, to have all to have twenty years, twenty years of film and footage is it blows me away. I bet you that documentary could have been like four or five hours long, and it would still be just as powerful. So, yeah. With, with that being said, uh, L.A. Originals definitely check that shit out. Streaming on Netflix right now. Um, adios.